G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel. I want to teach you people what you can paint in acrylic. I'll get the size of my canvas on the screen and I'll also get the colours running up the side there as well that I'm going to use. Now this is going to be some reflection and shadowing in this painting, uh, a good water layout, beautiful aspects to learn within your landscapes or mortarscapes. Okay, so get on over here and we'll get right into it. Now this one's a portrait layout. My horizon area is about above halfway and this is going to be a lot of dark, misty, swampy sort of sky. So I'm going to paint the sky in the sky and the water reflection half and to achieve that I want to grab some of this soft titanium white in my putter on a brush. I call it a putter on a brush because that puts the paint on it, don't muck around. I want to get some retarder in that because I want to be able to just make my sky soft and silky and smooth and blendable, okay? And we'll get the whole canvas blocked in and hopefully we get none in my coffee. Now, some of you might be aware I've always got my camera the subject to the side because this camera has automatic focus I found in my early days when I'm painting here it was constantly killing the automatic focus on what I'm painting so hence I put it to the side as best as I can just to stop that from happening okay I've got that on there see I've got that on there it's all glumpy and goobly and thick and blobby I'm going to come to the tip of this brush and because my water's laying that way I'm going to stroke it left and right left and right just so it's a nice, thin, even coat. Yeah, I've got a big blob there, I'll wipe that off. Just like that. Don't neglect your coffee. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Now, I want to mix up the sky colours. So over here, not too much of this. This is my cerulean blue, and I'm going to mix up, it's going to be a grey sky. So I might need some black or Payne's grey if you got it. Now I've cleaned my brush, I want the grey so I'm going to mix it on both sides of my putter on a brush and I'm going to start adding the blue just till it's the the bluey grey vibe that I want my water to be. Now as I'm mixing it I know it's going to be lighter than I want it to be so that's why I've got some black there just to get that the, the value that I want. So there we go, there's our bluey grey water. Now I want a little bit of black, not too much. A bit of mixing involved with this, but it's good to learn how to mix just so we can get that a uh, darker vibe. Now look what I'm doing when I'm brush mixing. I'm getting it right in the brush as well. So what mess is there, I've got the same consistent mess on my brush. I haven't got a all of a sudden surprise waiting for me, okay? So just be aware of that when you learn how to brush mix, if you do any brush mixing. Now I'll start at the top. And I'm going to come down to the horizon area there. I want to get it crisp and crossed to the edge there. Okay, coming across again, ironing it down. Now I'm going to pick up some more and start from the bottom of the canvas and come up. Okay, coming up a bit more. I've got enough paint here. Now I'm going to try and find the right value that I'm looking for and when I'm happy with it I'll let you know because this is a tutorial, I'm showing you what to do. It would be silly if I don't let you know, wouldn't it? Now I'm going to stroke it left and right, like a pure gentleman. Get the middle, if anything, I've got the middle a little bit lighter, coming down and then probably a bit darker down the bottom again. That's the vibe going on in my mind. I'm grabbing some more black now over here and I want to get a darker value of that mixed up on my brush. I just want some darkness. Let's say in this corner here, not quite dark enough. I want that, that's a bit better. And I'm going to just fade it out there, maybe a little bit there. And I don't know, down here, just like that. Not too much. Get that corner done. Now I'll come to the tip of this brush and I'll stroke that left and right as well. I could grab a blending brush and blend it, but I don't feel I need to. You do it the best way you can do it, I'm doing it the best way I can do it. Get this bottom bit done down there, and there. That's waterfying it as well. 
left and right, left and right. Now that water's still wet, I've got to take advantage of that so I can put some sun glare in there. Now I want to have a white glare in the sky, but I want some of it to have the tinge of yellow. I've got yellow ochre there, let's see if that's going to do the job. I want some of this mixed up. That's the colour I want, that'll do it. Now what I want to do, I'll just simply dampen my pouncer and dab it dry so it's a bit wet. I'll just prime it up in this craft paint first. Okay, what I'm going to do is now get this titanium white and I want to get my glare in the sky then I want to put that colour into it, okay? Okay, so I want this right up here. I'm pushing it on and now I want to dance it around and let it fade. I will grab a blending brush as well so I can blend this into the sky. I'm coming like an egg shape. It can come down a bit there. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my blending brush and a kitchen towel. Uh, I don't have to go too crazy, I've still got to put another colour in it. So what I want to do is stamp, get all those stipple marks out from the pouncer, wipe my brush and then start glaring this out into that grey sky and then we'll put that tinge of yellow into it. Now I've got to turn my brush around. Wipe it, come this way. So I can blend that into the darkness there. See, if I went this way, I'm going to keep picking up white and putting white into that colour. But if I turn around and come this way, I can fade it and control the fade from that white into there. You see what I mean? You're all right, Ian. Too right. I got you there, Cobber. Now, that's me glare. I'll quickly do the bottom one, which is about here in the water picking up some more of that white and then I'm going to go about the same the same footprint roughly somewhere there fading it out fading it out there we go I'll grab my blending brush all that's wet with that retarded paint that's why this is happening for me start from the white Dab it down, I've got the stipples a lot smaller, the, the little peaks, and now I'm going to start pushing that into there. Now, it's starting to dry on me a bit because I've been taking my time filming, but you can do half at a time if you feel you won't make it. Do the top half first and then prime up all the bottom and do the bottom half. Okay, I've got that. It's misty, it's glary. That's what I wanted. Now back down here to this yellow ochre. I'm going to see, yeah, and I want some of this just there like that. I'm going to grab my blending brush and taper that so we can see that hint of colour. It's just a hint. I might have to put more yellow ochre into that colour mix there. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just blaring that out because the middle's going to be white, intense white there, but I just want some warmth in there. And then the same down onto the bottom one, getting some the yellow ochre around the outside of it, just like that. And then the same again, glare, glaring that. One side and then the other side. Now I've gone back to the white pouncer, I'm just getting the, the middle more densified with white. I'll quickly blend, I want to blend that into that yellowy ochre colour now, but leave the vibe of that glare there and just simply soften that into the yellow ochre colour, just so you've got that little bit of warmth ringing around that sun there, because this sun is in a swamp, it's misted up with warmth and moisture in the air. And then the same down here. That'll do. I don't want it round, but I've got a round bit there, but I'm going to distort that. I don't want it to look roundish once I've finished blending it. Pulling it. There we 
we go. I do have that little bit of warmth there, here and around there, which is what I was after. I'm looking at that in the camera. It looks worse than what it does in real life. I've just got my finger because it's still a little bit damp and I've pulled and stretched it just like ripples in the water, distorting the reflection there, just to kill that circle edge on it. You might not need to do this to yours, but I just felt like I had to. You know, like when you scallop reflections, that's just what I'm doing now. I won't do it to the top. Now this has had a dry. My horizon area, where was it? It was up here somewhere, wasn't it? So what I'm gonna do, I wanna control what I do at the top and bottom. You might see Bob Ross style artists, they're doing everything at once, because oils stay wet longer, but we're not painting in the oils, I'm always painting in acrylics, so I have to adapt to the behavior of the paints. So what I'm gonna do is just put a bit of tape here and control what I put up the top, and then I can take the time, come down to the bottom, and put my reflections in the bottom as well. So I'm, my paint's gonna go under this tape, so I'm just gonna put that roughly where I want it, about there-ish, make sure it's level as well and find a brush that's gonna do your trees. Now I've got this gray there, I wanna get some more black. Uh, which way should I go? I'll go this way. So I wanna mix it up. I want a black, but I want a light color black, so I'm gonna gray it. So I'm just mixing it with a knife now so I don't destroy the brush I'm gonna to use to paint. I don't wanna brush paint it, brush mix it. Um, now I've got some deer foot. Oh, so you, can you see that there? I've used a round brush. What I'm gonna do, see how it's opened? I just flapped it. Uh, I wanna load this up and open it out, because like I did there, I wanna try and get that behavior onto the canvas. Now what I wanna do is kind of come down like this, okay? So I'll start off the painting there. See how thick that is there? I don't want that on the canvas. I want it nice and scratchy so we'll start where's my there we go there I'll, I'll start here I'll just tap it on there we go and I can get the solid bits solid once I've got the top controlled so I'm controlling the top just like that down here another one coming up now I'm going to turn my brush just so as I don't get some weird stamping pattern coming up now I can control the bottom half I'll get that a bit more prominent there we go and what I want to do now is gradually get this from that dotty stage to a solid stage just like this down to my tape. See, if I didn't have the tape there, I've got to worry about, oh, I don't want to go into the water yet. So that's why I did that. I want that a bit more open out there, more tree-like. And then get this real solid. Now this is a dark gray. It's the vibe I wanted. It's the color I wanted. Now I'm going from solid and slowly letting the brush open out the paint. See what I did there? twisting it around, changing the behavior of its stamping. You might be doing paintings and stuff and you feel you're doing a behavior that's working for you. You're evolving and developing when you're doing that. And if you find something that's working great for you, stick with it. That's how we learn. And the same over here, I'm gonna start at the bottom. See how easy this is, you can do it. Now I'm gonna turn my brush and push it and let it start coming from solid to open brush strokes on the canvas here. I've gone to a small detail brush, just a little dagger brush, and the, say like here, I want to get some of this controlled how I want it to look, and then bleed these into that stamping behavior you got there and let it fade away. Uh, I'm using the corner of this dagger brush. I bought this one in a set. It was in a packet of like six brushes. I bought the packet just for this brush itself. And we're just kind of getting the behavior of limbs and leaves and stuff out there 
into the high sky there. You control the height of these just by doing this. Coming out the side there. This one coming up here. I'm finding different parts of this brush doing different leaves instead of just the corner. I'm also opened it out. I've discovered and it's doing a shape and a pattern that I'm quite happy with. And you can see now just how this little brush detailing the tips of those has just made it a little bit more yummy to look at. I'm just going to pull the tape off. I will get my finger just in case there's a ridge of paint there just to flatten it. But I don't think there is. That's okay. And now we're just going to get this in the water. Now see how my water is higher than the top half? The water is a long way away coming to us, okay? Like that. And these reflections are going to come down distorted. Like this, I'm not going to make it just there because then it's going to look a bit weird, if you know what I mean. So I'll show you as I go. And where are we? <clears throat> I'm going to pretty much first, I want to get rid of this line with the brush coming along up and down motion. And now I'll start putting these, I've distorted that pretty easy. See how good acrylics are? You can stop and start and take your time. Now I'm gonna turn this brush upside down as if or so I've turned this upside down and I'm painting them that way, okay? So pretty much here I'm going to, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll start low, there we go, right in front of there. Now, like I said, they're gonna be distorted right in front of that sunlight there and something way down here, coming there just like that. Getting a bit more, I want that way down here. Whoa, look at that, I don't like those dots that just happened. Where's my brush? I'll use this brush. Hopefully I don't ruin it. I shouldn't do. There we go. I'm doing it heavy and then it's going to slowly... Oh, I dumped my round brush that I did the top one in the water. And it's going to slowly open up again, which is what I want it to do. So from solid to open stamping impressions. And you can control that working that way. Solid and then let it open up. I want it, this to open up, open up. And hopefully when I look in my monitor, I can see the vibe that I'm going for in this layout. Okay, certain parts of this, I want to grab me bullshit stick and get some ripples in the water. Now, a lot of you have seen this done before by me or other tutorialists. And I just want to work out from about here. I'm grabbing a flat brush. I want to come from the dark and then slowly just put some, make sure it's hinky enough, just get some and chisel your brush as you load it. I want to get some, let's see, just some minute ripples like this from the reflection into the water and you want these level with your horizon line not on an angle you go on an angle it's going to start looking a bit weird or crooked and you don't want people thinking your work's a bit weird or crooked just slowly taper it out like those dots that i didn't like i'll disguise some of those and you'll just see not too minimal this water's reasonably flat it's not too windy so i don't want too much of this the more you put of this from your reflections in the water, the more rough you're creating the surface of your water, okay? And you will see when I've done a little bit of this, I'm not going to do it everywhere, just how it's given that water a lot of bullshit in its reflections. And it's all done in acrylic. See here, I want to put it there, even though I might not see it, it's got to be there so it'll blend with what I'm doing 
just very little bits. You can have the odd one popping out. You can see how that's, let's say compared to this side here, I hope this video isn't going too long for you guys. You can see this side compared to that side. Now I've got some of this paint here. Let's hope it's not too bright. It's the same color. And this sunlight, you pretty much go on from your sunlight and then just dance some of this back into there. If you want to do this, you don't have to. Some people at different levels in their journey and you don't have to go up the street as far as others, okay? Now before I do the next section, just because we've got the water here, we've sort of got the surface on it, but from the land to us, the sun's up there, we need that sun now. So I'll show you with my hands. There's the surface of the water. We need the sun now. We need to make the sun look like it's hitting that surface there, not hitting a flat surface here. So what I want to do now is create that right in the guts here. So I'm going to grab some of my titanium white. I'll mix just a little bit of grey with it. I don't want too much because I just don't want it pure white. That's too grey. I'm going to wash my brush. Hang on a minute. There we go. That's the vibe I want. Was that on for? Was that on or not? I don't know if my camera was on. Uh, I don't know how far I went without it on. I'm adding all these white bits and bobs on there. I've got it very minimal and skinny out there and it's evaporating out here to dots. And it's making the water look like that. Yeah, so I just went back through the video file and realized when I started putting this on, the camera was not on. I thought it was on. It happens a lot to me. I wonder if it happens to any other YouTubers. Let me know if it does. Um, so yeah, I've, I'm putting this on. My horizon line's here. I've come a bit below it and then started adding this on. And I want a bit of that hitting it here. I've got some pure white paint there if I need to spark it up more brighter. Now I'm going to pick up just a pure white. Remember, I, 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 I got a bit of pure white. I can spark it up. And let's see if this is going to stand out. Just around here, I want to radiate a bit of a clearer band, but not making it a big solid white blob if I can help it. Fair it out a bit. That'll do. Now I've got my black paint. I've put a bit of water with it, and I've got my script liner. And we'll start from the bottom. We're going to have a few just coming up to about this height here, not covering that up. So I want to come from about, where's my camera? I want to come from about this height here. And these are going to be just, let's see if I can get one. I've got the camera in my way. Now I've got this brush here. I feel that, see the shape of it? I don't even know what type of brush that is. But I feel it can do a leaf, like just in a, in a single stamp. That's the sort of brush I want. Now I'm grabbing the Viridian Green. It's just the blocking in darkness for their leaves. And now I want to bring this over here. So we're going to have, I don't know, let's see if we can get these leaves in. And I want some leaves just arcing out. Just any old way. Doesn't matter if these are overcrossing because the, the highlighted colour we put for this will make them stand out in their own order.
And these ones down here, these are just full of leaves down here. We've got the main branches there, just like this. If you have a better way to do these, by all means, but like I say quite often, I can only show you how I do things. <laughs> Reasonably solid. All over the place, willy nilly. I will scratch some more little twigs in there. Stop hitting the camera in. I've grabbed the dagger brush for this side just to do a similar tree but with smaller leaves. So I've just changed the brush. I want some of this right out in the sky there. There we go. And I want to come around kind of this way. I'm also getting the uh, dagger brush and see I put a couple there. Just getting some finer ones to the end of this just to create more density within these bits and bobs here. Not too much though, try not to go overboard. You can grab your script liner here if you feel you want to join any, let's create nice thin, some branches coming out to this stuff. Just sort of make it up as you go. take some of the paint off it. These ones I want more viney, meaning more curvy, like that. Curvy like that. Where branches I make sort of nody and stubborn and stipply. Okay, I've got green oxide now, using the same brush as you used, and this is gonna highlight them. Now don't go too crazy with this. I'll start from about here. And I want to kind of get my leaves just indicating, how's that looking? What's in front. So if anything, I'm going to hit the top of the leaf and let the bottom be shadowed. Get more, you want it reasonably inky, but not too inky where it goes see throughy because you want to start from the bottom here, there, there, get some leaves hitting with highlights and change the shapes of them. But just over all that dark green you put there, you can have the odd one tracing out if you want. And like I said, I might get some perylene green. I'll have a look in a minute and see if there's any vibes that need really silhouetting to be darkened up. And this is just a fun, exciting painting to do. So when it's hanging on your wall, people can just look at it and get lost within it. It's, it's got those factors and vibes about it. Just highlighting it here and there. Leaving some of the darks. And see how it looks mumble jumble just, but it's, it's creating that effect on your canvas. So people look at it, they know what they're looking at. It's not a it's not a source or a milk or anything, it's it's a water scene with some trees. So watch what the dark perylene does. I'm gonna kind of get it against the edge there and scatter it out. And a lot of these viridian greens, I'll try and get some little bits of shadow leaves under them as well, kind of tapering out into the 
foliage there. This is in silhouette, it shouldn't be so bright here, but there we go. It's getting dark over summer there. Over, let it all be hairy. It doesn't have to be hard and solid because this is the depth, the background of it. Change your brush shape. Down here as well. Okay, I'll just sign this and then we'll reveal it. And once again, I want to thank my YouTube channel members and my Patreons who support my content every month. Much appreciated. Hit the links below if you want to become a Patreon or hit the Join tab on my YouTube channel here if you want to become a member of my YouTube channel and enjoy the perks that they get and you're supporting my content. Go. that's not too shabby we've got a beautiful swampy misty scene there with a bit of distance and I know you can do it well that was nice different and exciting I think if you like what you saw you tell your friends but if you don't you tell everybody also have a look at this other video of mine goodbye good luck and good on you